Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. Guys, it is the last day of September. Tomorrow will be ushering in October, which has traditionally been amazing for Bitcoin. Uh, one of Bitcoin's best months. Uh, that's why they call it October. Um, so we are going to get into all of that, guys, but I just did just want to hop on. I haven't been on in a week or so, and I did want to hop on and give you guys uh, some things to think about as we go into October and what's been kind of happening over the last week or so. So let's get into it. Uh, but before we do, guys, this being the last day of the month, this is the last time I will be showcasing the Salty Sanctuary uh, right here on our channel. Um, because as you guys know, every month I choose a different small animal sanctuary to kind of spotlight and try and, and raise awareness and, and money for. Uh, so if you guys do have a few bucks laying around, and and want to help these animals out uh always very much appreciated on my end i do leave all of their information this is their instagram that's up here right now um but they do have a facebook and i do also leave the links to their paypal and their venmo in the descriptions of all of all of my videos this month so go down Check them out, throw them a couple dollars over on Venmo. Uh, very much appreciated, guys. All right, so let's get into it. This morning, we are opening up a bit down. Now, this actually started last night during Japan's uh, market hours, right? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm also just getting over a, a cold or a, a cough, guys. So uh pardon me um but yeah this happened this started we started seeing some red last night during J japan's trading hours and guys the my first thought was oh oh what's happening with the yen trade uh but i don't think this is necessarily anything going on with the carry trade um what happened was we've we've known for a bit that uh they, they have some chaos going on in their politics over there in Japan. Um, just like in our election cycle, we have an incumbent dropping out of the race. We've seen Biden drop out of the race here, and their prime minister over there has decided he's not going to stay in office um, and is resigning. Now, this, this guy right here, um, he is the next prime minister that's coming in and he says that he is going to call for an emergency election next month instead of not, uh, I believe next year was, was their scheduled election. He's, he's planning on having an emergency election next month. Um, so it's just a bit of turmoil over there, uh, a bit of uncertainty, and markets do not respond well to uncertainty. So we did see the Nikkei or Nikkei, the uh, J Japan's stock market closed down, uh, I believe, almost 5%, which is pretty huge for for traditional finance. Um, so they they closed way down uh, in Japan and it's just. It's just Japan again, kind of screwing up global markets. Um, However, guys, right next door in China, uh, I believe last week we saw this news come. Uh, China, China's central bank unveils most aggressive stimulus since pandemic. So not only did we see the Fed cut rates 0.5%, but we also saw this massive stimulus plan from China unveiled last week. Now this is due to bring hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars into the market. And 
this is all markets guys when when uh one of the biggest economies in the world stimulates like this it has an effect on all markets um you know we're at down uh let's see right here this this is just one part of this stimulus yeah this uh chinese stimulus but they're lowering the bank's reserve requirement ratios and this is due alone to stimulate 142 billion dollars worth and it, that's actually one trillion yuan um so massive massive stimulus coming out of china and their stock market actually ended 20 percent up on the day so big big moves in china uh unfortunately we do have this this uncertainty with japan going on that's kind of dampening a lot of things um but guys this is going to play out china's china's uh central bank stuff is going to play out for a while uh this is gonna this is going to have impacts over the next year or two years i'm sure uh and there was a report just put out recently too that you know in relation to global liquidity Bitcoin is actually one of the most correlated assets to global liquidity. So when we see the Fed uh, easing, we see China stimulating, um, you know, Bitcoin is going to be the biggest mover on that, according to this latest study. <coughs> Guys, excuse me. Um, okay, so we are just ending up September and you guys remember, you know, one of my first videos this month was that we were in September. A lot of analysts were saying September is historically right down here, uh, where you can see, you know, on average, we have negative, almost negative 20%, um, moves on Bitcoin in September. And I, I, I kind of said, I don't, I don't see that happening. Um, you know, just because of all the tailwinds that I did see coming, uh, and guys, this is pretty epic. I mean, right now it's not at 11.4% after, um, last night's dip. Let's see. Let's just go over to the charts really quick. We'll move over to the monthly. Um, so after last night's dip, we are sitting for the month of September, we're up 7.76, which if we go back over to that chart, the, the best September in the history of Bitcoin before this September was only 6.04%. So guys, we are literally having the best September of Bitcoin's history right now. <laughs> and it doesn't seem like it because we've we've had those all-time highs that we set back in March or April. But guys, we I mean, we are we are making moves right now. Um now, look, October, you can see all these greens. We only have uh, actually two, two red Octobers in the history of Bitcoin, uh, as far as this goes back anyway. I, I, you know, before 2013, I don't have that data in front of me. But if we look at the halving years, guys, um, 2020, we had, uh, we had these three green months. And if we look back, yeah, oh, I'm sorry. You guys can't even see the, uh, let me just widen this out for you here. 
There we go. Okay, so 2020, right, right here, we have a green October, green November, green December. If we look back to 2016, which was another halving year, we had, we actually had a green September there, green October, green November, and green December. Now, I'm specifically looking at having years because we had the having this year and history tends to rhyme or repeat or whatever. So what I did was I took all of these, added them up and averaged them. And guys, if we follow the average of the next three months of a having year, that actually puts us at $117,000 Bitcoin by the end of the year. Huge. So, um, you know, what to expect there? Do we really expect $117,000 Bitcoin? I honestly would not be surprised. Um, you know, in 2020, we ended, um, we ended up about, uh, I, I think, twenty or thirty thousand dollars at the end of December um, of twenty twenty, which was right pretty close to the all time high. Right, um, we rallied up to the all time high by the end of the year. Now we've already hit the all time high this year, and if it, you know, going back to one of my previous um, kind of theories was that if you took out China banning Bitcoin and the COVID uh, crash that we saw in 2020, if you took out those two black swans, we should have hit $105,000 Bitcoin last cycle. Now, that goes, if that is the case, you know, $117,000 Bitcoin by the end of the year would put us right around that, what would have been the all time high if we would have not had those two black swans. So, could it happen? Absolutely, in my opinion. According to that uh, theory, also, if you guys remember way back, I mean, this was back in March or uh, February when I, when I made that, um, video about that theory. But what I said back then was, according to that theory, we should be trading around 52,000 at the having. And guys, you've seen it over the last six months. We have trended. We, we were, when I made that video, we were still up around one, uh, around $70,000 for Bitcoin. And so my thing was, is I, I said, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we came back down to that 52,000 and we did come back down to that. So that kind of lends a bit of validity to that theory. Um, so $117,000 per Bitcoin by the end of the year, I don't think is completely out of, uh, out of grasp. I don't think that's a overly bullish thing to say. Now, there is one thing um, that that I do kind of worry about. It's uh, the $89,000 or yeah, $89,000 area. I think we might see some resistance there. Now, let me just jump over um, to the charts really quick. We're going to actually go um, on the daily. Okay, so if you guys remember, I, I drew in this purple, these purple lines and was saying that this was a, a big uh, megaphone pattern playing out, right? It's usually a bullish signal and we usually break to the upside. And look, guys, I, I put this line in uh, probably a month or two ago. And the reason I have it right here, you can see there's a few discrepancies where it has gone above this. Um, let me just zoom in here. But 
the reason I put this line here is just because of how many touch points we have right here. We have one, uh, two right here, three, four, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm following the screen line. One, two right here, three, four, five, and now just the last day or so this weekend, we hit right at that line of resistance, guys, that megaphone uh, upper end. Now, we did hit it as resistance. We come down, uh, you know, how many times are we going to test that line before we break it? But once we do break that, uh, that trend line, all bets are off, guys. We, we could really start seeing that parabolic stage of the market uh, once we break out of this trend. So, and we are right there. So, guys, um, as I was saying, you know, back uh, just a few minutes ago, I was saying that that $89,000 right around here is potential concern for resistance as well. Now, the reason I say that that area specifically is a possible area of resistance is because of this theory that's out there. It's called the 5.1 or 5.3 theory. And there is a lot of uh, validity to the past statistics on that theory. But what it says is it says that we're going to top out at 89,000 this cycle, um, which isn't as bullish as I am, uh, for sure. I, I think we're going much, much higher than that this cycle. But there is some statistics that have always played out every cycle. And if that holds true, that 89,000 uh, area is going to be an area of interest. Now, the reason I don't like that theory, even though there is uh, certain things that have held every single cycle, what that, according to that theory, we will hit 89,000 this cycle at the top, and we will never, ever, ever hit another all time high. It's just, it's not a sustainable. Um, theory like unless you think 89,000 is as high as bitcoin will ever get the most scarce asset we've ever known is going to top out this year at 89,000 I don't think so guys um so personally I don't love that theory not only because it's not as bullish as I want it to be but also it just isn't sustainable. Like, you know, there's no possible way in, in any world that I can imagine that 89,000 is as high as Bitcoin will ever be. I just don't buy into that. Um, but I do think it's a significant level and I do think we might see some uh, some resistance there. So just keep that in mind. I hope that's not the case. I hope we just blast through 89,000 and we we can all laugh and point fingers at the uh, 5.1 <laughs> theory people. Um, if, if, if you like that theory, I, I get it. I, I understand, you know, there are a lot of historical things about that theory that really ring true. Uh, I just don't, I don't think it's, it's not going to fit forever. So um, anyways, guys, uh, moving on, um, you know, we have had that, uh, well, we will close tonight. We, we will close the best September we've ever had in Bitcoin. Um, guys, also in the news, the SEC green lights options on BlackRock's IBIT. Now, guys, this is important uh, because this will, this will bring 
a lot more liquidity into Bitcoin's market, especially from Wall Street side and institutional. Um, now, there are a few things, you know, the SEC has has passed it, but this also needs to be approved by the OCC and the CFTC. So they're not trading yet, uh, but it is just a matter of time before these do fully pass and start trading on iBits, uh, Bitcoin ETFs. Now, hopefully more options come to the other ETFs. I'm sure they'll all kind of eventually start following on all of those ETFs, uh, which is just going to bring another wall of liquidity into Bitcoin, guys. This is it's not going to be an all at once thing, probably not like we saw with the ETF approvals. Uh, but this is a bullish sign that will slowly tick up uh, Bitcoin's liquidity. Um, you know, there are major, major institutions that won't invest in ETFs and things unless they can hedge their bets with things like options. So this will bring more institutional interest into Bitcoin long run. Um, another thing, guys, with the SEC, and this one, ultimately, I think this is good, but there's there's a, a very sour taste in my mouth about this. Now, BNY gets the SEC's go ahead to custody crypto assets. Now, if you remember back to uh, the videos we were doing uh, a couple months ago when all, all the, you know, the House and the Congress, everybody was meeting and voting on SAB 121, the SEC's uh, bulletin that basically said banks are not allowed to custody Bitcoin. Um, so banks aren't allowed, uh, appear, according to the SEC, banks really can't custody crypto. Except for the banks that they give special permission to. Um, just seems a little shady, a little, uh, you know, backroom deals going on here. I don't know what. But ultimately, I think this is a good thing. It's just how it's done. Uh, it, it's discouraging that the SEC is, is acting like this. But, you know, currently uh, with the ETFs, basically there's one custodian and that's Coinbase. Now, BNY opening to custody for, the, for crypto assets and things will mean that, that maybe uh, BlackRock, I wouldn't be surprised if BlackRock switches custody or diversifies and does some custody into BNY Mellon and, and keeps some with Coinbase. Uh, and the reason for that, you guys, it's, it's kind of a diversification away from risk. So, you know, where there's only Coinbase really custodying Bitcoin ETFs right now, I mean, I, I hope this doesn't happen, but what if, if something happened like FTX and, and Coinbase acted um, unethically and did some weird things with Bitcoin ETFs or, uh, uh, you know, anything to do with the custody, that could open up the entire in industry for some massive risk. Um, so ultimately, I think anybody getting into, you know, the more and more uh, custodians we have for these assets, uh, I think is, is good. Now, you know, you're going to have the contrarians that say Bitcoin's about getting away from the banks. And yeah, that's true. But guys, we are never going to have mass adoption without having mass adoption, right? So banks being able to custody Bitcoin does nothing to, to those of us that want to custody our own Bitcoin. But this is a step towards mass adoption of the, the asset class, guys. So this is a good thing. Just weird how the SEC 
did it. Um, how they're giving special exemptions to certain banks that they like. Uh, meanwhile, they deny licenses to banks like Custodia and Kate, Caitlin Long's bank uh, because of their association with cryptocurrency. It's a little, it just seems like a, a rigged, a very, very rigged system, which I, I guess we shouldn't be surprised, but... Okay, um, so let's get into rate cuts, guys. We we saw 50 uh, basis point cut this month. Um, now, if we go over to the, the Fed watch um, right here, we can see that the market is actually pricing in. It's pretty close. Uh, we've got 42% chance that we will get another 50 basis point cut in November. Um, and I think this, uh, this FOMC meeting, uh, it, yeah, for the 7th of November. So that's right within a day or two of the election, um, which will also be pretty big news, um, either way, um, for crypto, but we've got a 42% chance that we get a 0.5% cut and a 57.9% chance that we get a 25% cut. But what's really interesting is, is if we jump to December, we've got this biggest area here, which says we'll be sitting at a, a 4.0 to 4.25 by the, uh, at the end of this uh, meeting in December. So, what that says is that if we only get 25 basis point cuts in November, this is planning on having a 50 basis point cut in December or uh, vice versa. If we get a 50 point uh, cut in November, we'll get a 25% cut in December. That's what the data is saying um, when you look between these two months, guys. So we've got. Uh, you know, almost, you know, according to this, markets are kind of um, anticipating uh, with our last rate cut, we're anticipating a 1.25% basis cut reduction since last month or since early this month to the end of the year, which is pretty huge. Uh, 1.25% in three, four months is a pretty big move. So again, guys, this goes into bringing more liquidity into uh, the entire system. This will increase global liquidity. And, you know, as that, uh, that report came out, Bitcoin is the biggest mover on liquidity when when liquidity drains out of the system bitcoin goes down when we see liquidity coming in to the market we can almost guarantee that bitcoin will start doing what bitcoin does so uh just another tailwind we have going on right there uh we did talk about bny now guys another thing that i want to talk about really quick um there is the bear, uh, the bear case um, that, and I've I've been saying this for a while. The the bear case that makes most sense to me is that we have a a recession or a hard landing uh, coming out of these these rate hikes, um, you know. And traditionally, I I think if we did have a recession that Bitcoin would be hit the hardest because guys, Bitcoin has always kind of traded as a risk on asset. Now, when we have market downturn, when, when stocks go into a bear market, what we see is that Bitcoin kind of leads the way. And this is the biggest bull, uh, bear case that I've been able to find that I've heard anybody talking about is that we're going into a recession. The problem is, guys, and I'm going to jump back over to that article. This says 
uh, BlackRock's head of crypto doesn't see Bitcoin as a risk on asset. And guys, they have been doubling down. BlackRock has been doubling down on this narrative time and time and time again. When we first saw the ETFs launch, we, uh, we saw Larry Fink going on uh, mainstream media saying that he thought that Bitcoin was a flight to, uh, flight to quality is what he said, or a flight to safety, which is kind of the opposite of a risk on asset, okay? A uh, flight to quality or a flight to safety, when things are uncertain, people flock to flight qualities like gold. And guys, listen, every chance BlackRock has been getting, it was just the last video that I did BlackRock put out a paper saying that there is significant risk to the dollar and that Bitcoin is that flight to quality. Um, you know, time and time again, these guys have been doubling down on this narrative. So guys, the point is that you, you have this narrative that we're going into a recession and that's going to that's going to kill Bitcoin's market. But guys, when the largest asset manager in the world says, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. This is not a risk on asset. This is a flight to quality. People take notice. And I think people have been taking notice. We've seen nothing but inflows from, you know, we just saw Goldman Sachs buy like half a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin to hold themselves. Um, just all kinds of institutions coming. We're, we're having those options come, which is just going to bring more and more institutions in. We haven't even seen the wirehouses turn on for these ETFs. When that happens, we're going to see more institutions inflowing. Um, and the point is, guys, that we may have a hard landing. We may ha hit a recession. Uh, if, we, if we see unemployment go to 5% uh, really quickly and people are getting laid off, we might see our economy kind of take a, a big hit. But the narrative for Bitcoin is changing. When the, the largest asset manager in the world, who some people call the fourth arm of the government, says this is a flight to quality, if we go into a, a, an economic downturn, that if it is, if it does truly gain steam as a flight to quality, it doesn't matter if we, we go into an economic downturn. That will see people flocking into flight safeties and flight to quality. They'll go into gold. They'll go, go into Bitcoin if, if people really are treating it as a flight to quality. So guys, the, the point here is, you know, the one bear case there is out there for Bitcoin right now is kind of blown out of the water by Larry Fink. Everything else is a tailwind. We've got global liquidity going up. We've got uh, Chinese stimulus. We've got um, options coming. We've got institutions coming. We have the four-year cycle playing out just like it should, guys. Everything is lining up, and that one bear case is having, is losing all of its steam because Larry Fink and BlackRock is saying that it doesn't matter because Bitcoin is a flight to quality. So guys, I am nothing but bullish here on Bitcoin. It'll be a really exciting next uh, three months, I believe. Um, starting tomorrow, I think we're, we're going to have some fun times ahead of us. Now, the, the thing, guys, is if you've never been through a Bitcoin uh, cycle, these parabolic moves 
they're they're good they're fun but they're they're about as gut-wrenching as even the down times because you will hit these all-time highs and you'll have so much euphoria and then you'll see the next three or four days as a uh, consolidation or a, a retest of a level. And it's, it is literally a roller coaster. So prepare yourself, um, you know, even for these upsides, you know, traditionally we've had 30% corrections during the parabolic parts of the cycle. So, don't get it in your mind that we're just going to go to into this parabolic uh, season and it's just going to be easy uh, because you're still going to have to control your emotions. You know, you're still going to have to have your plan. And if you guys have watched my videos, you'll know that I harp on having a plan. Uh, this will help you control your emotions. Have a plan. Know what you're going to do. Know what your plan is on holding Bitcoin. If you're if you're planning on holding uh, a certain amount of time, four years, that's great. Have that plan. If you're planning on holding till quarter three of next year, when we should be historically, we should be topping out at that time, then stick to that plan. Um, you know, just have a plan. Don't be looking at the charts every day and making decisions based on your emotions you will lose money that way. Um, and the exciting time is coming, but it is every bit or more emotional as what we've been doing this last six months. So guys, with that, I am gonna end this video, but thank you for, for tuning in, uh, lending me your ear. I know this has been, um, a little bit of a long video, but I did have a lot of stuff that I wanted to get out for you guys. A lot of good things coming. Thank you for, uh, for, you know, setting this time aside and paying attention into my videos, guys. I very much appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.